Should be a jump somewhere in the name of Philippians. Four, eight. Four, eight. Hopefully four eight matches my four eight. It does. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, four, four eight kind of rhymes with four H. Four H. What stands for? I have no clue. Health, home, heart, and hands. Huh? Health, home, <laughs> heart, heart, and hands. Really? Yeah. Huh. I just, I just always know there was. Uh, there I, I do what on the FFA side. I do on the green side. But anyway. <laughs> future farmers <laughs> of America. Of America. When you find your place, please stand. Ouch. If you don't find it, go ahead and stand up and fool me. No. <laughs> I'll never know. There won't be a test on it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Let us pray. Dear loving, gracious Father, we're thankful today to be gathered together in your house and in your name. We ask that you just let us learn of you, Lord. Let us learn what you have us to learn this morning, Lord. Just be with us and guide us. Pray for these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I always do things backwards, so we're going to start with the First, with the word think. Please do. <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> I do read. Oh, it makes life so much easier. I, I don't know, but I think it might be a sin if your last words are, hey, watch this. <laughs> you know, you've got to be better than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lately, he's already going, <laughs> <laughs> I've got relatives. He's, oh. I'm trying to think on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, we really are called to think. It's a very good witness to be a thinker in, instead of the guy who dies by saying, hey, watch this. I mean, I'm not quite sure what kind of testimony that is. It does make for a good video on, on YouTube, but, you know. <laughs> famous last words but no I mean thinking is, you know, this is how horrible is this thinking is a good thing yeah. <laughs> in, my, in my job I, I get to uh, teach people how to drive industrial forks which is forklifts for industrial truck which are forklifts for, for you people and it really comes down to just one thing if you're using a forklift those are the big things that take a little pipe off a truck or pallets off of trucks just ask yourself what is the worst thing that can happen and if the answer is anything besides, oh, I'm going to drop it on the ground, then you can't do it. If the answer is, I'm going to drop it on the guy's head, make the guy move. I'm going to drop it on that truck, and move the truck. It's very simple. When you go to a, to a, a new job, I always like the idea of remain quiet, be thought of a fool, then open your mouth and move all down. If you're in a new situation, just go in quietly, scope out the landscape, see what's happening, see what's going on. There's a lot of little things along that end. This makes life so much easier. And then I was, I was thinking, and it dawned on me, the best way to be smart is to be old. A lot of young people die with, hey, watch this. Okay. <laughs> and a lot of us should have. Yes. But I was at work the other day, which means probably four or five years ago, because that's how time works. I was at work the other day, and for some reason, one of the secretaries walked up to me and go, what is the eyes of March? And it's not eyes, it's eyes, it's I -E -E -S. And I And I'm old enough that I grew up with, and the cable was brand new, and the History Channel used to have history on it. <laughs> yeah. And I knew for some unknown reason that eyes of March is when Caesar Augustus got killed in Congress. Brutus walked up to him, and somehow all the senators walked by him. Everybody stabbed Caesar. He died, and nobody knew how. And the lesson there was: politics will kill you. It's safe to be a general. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And they go, "Oh yeah, you know that." And then they go, "Okay, what is Carnival or Mardi Gras down there in the French Quarter?" I go, "Okay, no, this Tuesday. Fat Tuesday. This is the day before Lent. The forty days before Easter. 
I knew that because I grew up in church and because I'm old. We used to use all those old words in church. And at this time, the secretary's going to go, okay. You think you're so smart? I go, no, I don't think I'm smart, but you know, history and church doctrine, I'm pretty good on. I also know where free bathrooms are in the West, free public bathrooms. <laughs> I know where good campsites are. <laughs> yes. Ask me about raising kids. The baby can't cry if it's held upside down. Try it sometime, see if I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> then, then the secretary gave me a, a sideways eight. That's a sideways eight. And I'm going, well, what's that? And I'm going, I'm old. I know what that is. That's a sign for affinity. Mm -hmm. I'm old enough. I used to have a camera. And I could take days to get a perfect picture. I could develop film. And someday I hope to be in a museum where I can just develop film, kind of like the Maxwell does nowadays, or like the those old, uh, what do they do when they play knights and... and just for creative mechanism when they do the reenactments. Yeah, yeah, for that, that's way too big a word. I was thinking of the, of the, the what the fairs of the knights, the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the Renaissance, Renaissance Fair. The Renaissance Fair. Yeah. So I thought I could, I could, I could develop film. <laughs> so I thought I, I knew that in my, you know, my Renaissance film. And that's why I knew this on the side of the camera. So I can take days of what you guys can do in seconds with photo, Photoshop. <laughs> I can I do it in days instead of seconds. And then somebody had the brilliant idea that the boss's son was thinking about being a game warden. And somebody said, well, they'll shoot him. <laughs> if the boss's son was a game warden. And the other guy said, you know what, I don't think a game warden has ever got killed in the line of duty. And I go, I, I, know, I know this one. A gentleman named Claude Dallas killed two game wardens back in 82. Some guys named Pokin Animals. I'm sitting here to myself and go, yeah, and uh, they caught him in Paradise, Nevada. 15 months afterwards, uh, they threw him in jail in Idaho, where he since escaped, and they caught him again. And they're all looking at me like, how do you know they're Pogan Holmes? Elms. I go, yeah, I just, I just don't know these things. <laughs> and my, my buddy, the, the college grad, came up and said, okay, what is Armistice Day? And I go, oh, I know this one. <laughs> I know this one because I read Snoopy, the comic strip. <laughs> and I'm old enough to know it used to be, Veterans Day used to be Armistice Day on, on the calendar. Mm -hmm. and, and Snoopy taught me that Armistice Day is when World War I ended. On the, the 11th month, on the 11th day, at the 11th hour, at the 11th minute. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. I mean, they look at me like, how do you know that? I go, because I'm old and I read comic strips. <laughs> 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 then they thought, okay, let's get them. The battle of the Alamo. And I am cracking up at this point. I am dying. I'm okay, first of all, it's not American history, though I love American history. Texas was their own country, part of Mexico. I'm like, okay, 1838. Travis was in charge, Santana was the Mexican guy. I'm counting myself. 135 people. <laughs> uh, 10 days of the siege. Travis sent for reinforcements on the 10th day that they never came, they never came, they never came. And I am singing the song of the Alamo to me by Marty Robbins. <laughs> and it's correct history. <laughs> on the 13th day, they lost, everybody was killed. Travis, Jim Bowie, the guy with the big knife, and Davy Crockett. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, well, how do you know that? And I go, at this time, it's time to go back to work. And I'm dying. I go, ask me about the Battle of 1812, the Battle of New Orleans. Yeah. Ask me about the Bismarck. <laughs> ask me about Jim Bridger. I know all these things. <laughs> ask me how to sound ferocious, honestly. It's something hard. Okay, so okay, so I'm old. I read comics. I know country western songs. I'm in like flip. Okay, so that's not very very practical. Okay, let's, let's get back back to the lesson. And nothing to do with anything. <laughs> but it was fun. But thinking is fun. <laughs> Most of the time when this verse is preached. Everybody looks at the words true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, and praise. And you read those and you come up with there's only, there's only two obvious answers. Either the word of God or God himself. God's love for humanity. Which is undeniable, undeniable which, which is true. But that is not what the verse is saying at all. The important words are whatsoever 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 if there be any if there be any the word whatsoever is just a more strong term for the word whatever what 
whatever. You didn't let that whatever. How, how much is whatever is true? How much truth is there in a whatever? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, okay. No, pretty much true, true is true. Honest, honest, just is just. If you get down to if there be any, you want to use the if there be any virtue in the God in the Word of God. It's all there. It's all. It's not an if. It's not an any. These words are not exclusive. They're inclusive. They're big. How much truth is there? Is there in any truth? Truth is either truth or truth. There's no in between. But you down to the any virtue part or any praise. If there be any. 10%? I can think upon 10% virtue? Theoretically, it would be possible, right? The, the, the virtuous portion you could... The virtuous the portion is it. The honor is the true and the just. Well, so what things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, and praise outside of the, the Bible? Make it more interesting. Science. The botanist, the biologist, the geologist. That's all God's work. That's all true. A mom and a dad horse make a baby horse. That, that's, that's just true. That's all there is to it. <laughs> and we may not know the whole truth. I mean, we started off with earth, wind, fire, and what's the other one? Water? Or, or, yeah. yeah. Okay. You saw before elements. Now there's, what, 168 or whatever the number is. I mean, it's not the end of truth, but all, all science is true. The conclusions may be wrong when you talk about creation and evolution, but the fact that the you know, insect has three parts, it's, it's true. It is what it is. Tungsten. I got no idea what tungsten is. It's some kind of rock, I assume. It's a form of steel. Yeah, okay. It's in steel. I know the welder guys use tungsten sometimes. But if you had a rock, or a piece of tungsten, if it is a rock, and you just had it on your desk and you looked at it and thought about it, and you put heat to it to see where it melted or sliced it open or figure out what it's good for, that would be true. That would be honest. That would be part of God's word of what you're told to do. Right? It's right there. Nature. you got Lake Tahoe right, right up in the hill here. It's got to be some type of sin not to go stop and smell the roses occasionally. <laughs> it's got to be. Because, you know, from, from here, in a day's drive, you got the tallest trees in the world, coastal mm -hmm. redwoods. You got the biggest trees in the world, the sequoias. Mm -hmm. You got the oldest trees in the world, the uh, bristlecone pine, three or four, five thousand years old. All within one central location. Now, you know, you can't play hooky all your life, but it is not wrong to go out there and look at these marbles that God created and put there. Um, sports. You know, we're thinking sports. The Olympics, in a true, true sense, are they not true, honest, and just? What the human body can do in those silly little games? How athletic they are, how incredible it is that somebody could ice skate backwards to a silly song? <laughs> or somebody could jump that far or run that far? Um, and sports. Sports are just kind of like civilized war, right? Sports is just men playing war without without no dead people at the very end of it. I always like to think about Michael Jordan and a coach named Phil Jackson. Michael Jordan, who is assumed to be the greatest basketball player of all time, has zero rings before Phil Jackson shows up as coach. Now the whole reason of playing any sport is to win the ring. It's the only reason these guys play the game. You may go, no, Andy, they play for money or for fame, or for fortune, or girls, all that comes with, with the ring. Mm -hmm. If you don't play good enough to win a ring, you go home early, you can't play. The better you play, the more rings you, you win, the more money, the more fame, the more women, the more song, the more dance, whatever it is. It's all about the ring. Mr. Dan Marino in the NFL at one time held over 20 records. He has no ring, and generally not considered to be one of the best players of all time, because he doesn't have the ring. But anyway, Michael Jordan, Playing the NBA five, six years, no rings. Phil Jackson, coach shows up, they win three in a row. And before it's all said and done, Michael has five rings, all with Phil Jackson as coach. Phil Jackson quits the Chicago Bulls, takes a few years off, 
The Lakers, in the meantime, have Kobe Bryant and Shaq. Probably one of the best guards, the best centers in the in NBA. Now, if you're going to pick an all-star basketball team, if you pick Shaq and Kobe be one of your fellow players, you would be respected and not be laughed out. They have zero rings until Phil Jackson shows up. Phil Jackson shows up and goes, okay, this is what we're going to do. And I can just imagine that I can, he's showing up. And he, Phil has two rings as a player, six as a coach at this time. So he has eight rings. Almost more than anybody else. Almost more, but not quite. He go walks in there and he says, okay, this is what we're going to do, gentlemen. We're going to play this defense. I just imagine Kobe going, no, no, we have to do this. And Phil's going to just go, put up his hand. See, see this? I got more on this hand. <laughs> you want any of these? I've got these. What have you got, Mr. Kobe? What kind of credibility is that? I mean, doesn't that end just ends all arguments just right, right there? And you know, it's like, you know, see, see, <laughs> we're all here for, for this. I just imagine that every time any player wanted to argue with the coach, the coach is going to go, or even worse. This is the only figures I have that don't have rings on, only these two. <laughs> Let me see your hand. How many do you have? Would it have such credibility? What kind of witness would that be? I mean, I always enjoy that. People come ask me, oh, your kids are well-behaved. And you tell them, I tell them what I do, and they go, oh, well, it's beside the point. It's like, what do I mean that's beside the point? There's no but. Here it is. You asked me. I didn't ask you. Phil Jackson says, you know, this is what I got. What do you have? In the first Desert Storm War, war, way back in the 90s, early 90s, the Iraqis were amazed. Well, this one Iraqi tank crew was captured by the Americans. Go back to an army office, and the tankers had a picture of Rommel up on, on the tank back in the office. And the Iraqis go, why do you have Rommel? He was your enemy. And the Americans go, he wrote the book. Everything we did today, we won this war in 28 days because he did it first. We read his book. Of course, we Americans, we did it better. I think it's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to have the reputation that even your enemy is going to listen to you? Even your enemy is fearful of you. Um, let's go on. The art. I'm not a big artist guy. Um, I do like the old Dutch masters. My opinion of Picasso and the, and the cubism stuff, all that square stuff. I think that's art without God. <laughs> that's what I see. People tell me I'm wrong, but there really is a, a method to his madness. There really is art there. I just don't there see it. There was madness. <laughs> There's madness. <laughs> But a good painting. I mean, I, I have dragged the kids off of the art museum for just to you know, see what it is. It does not hurt you. Um, dance. I'm not much of a dancer either. I have seen, I have seen Swan Lake, the Nutcracker. Um, see, gorgeous. I honestly, don't, I honestly don't get it. But I went to see, I went to go and try to figure out. Um, river dance. All those awesome. Irish ladies dancing. What do they have that they have to express their life that way? Should you have that? Why don't we have that? Well, there ain't nobody fat in that line. I don't know that much. They don't eat. So much energy, so much expressionism. That is still part of God. That is some truth. There is some lovely. There is some purity there. I'm not quite sure what it is or how to even get it. But it's something I think is worthy to think upon. Something to wonder why. Um, music. Might as well just keep keep doing music here. That's that's part of the arts. I love music. Can't can't play anything. I, I love music. Um, older the better. I know some reason the other day, which once again probably means two years in my world. The kids were talking about country western music. I, I like the real country western music and. I told him country western music is a bunch of dead white guys, a handful of women, and one black guy. And my kid is smart enough to go, no father, it's two. <laughs> and I'm going, hold on here. <laughs> Let's count them. The first one that father was thinking of was Char Charlie, Charlie Pride. Pride. Charlie Pride. 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 That was the one I had. My kids go, no, Darius Rucker. Mm -hmm. And father goes, no, 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 no. 
Dave H. Rucker is the front, front man for Hootie and the Blowfish. And my kids are crack up laughing because they think I made up Hootie and the Blowfish. No, <laughs> no, no, really. I mean, <laughs> and Joy, the straight face, goes, well, that's probably why he left. Because <laughs> you must be called Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I find it funny they thought I was pulling their leg. I got to be more serious, but it's like <laughs> even I can't make up a name Hootie and a Blowfish. No. Come on. <laughs> Some things are just beyond my imagination. Sounds like an owl with a fish aquarium. <laughs> it's like, no, but and music is powerful. Music will I mean there are denominations that don't have instruments because they know that you can change somebody's attitude. I mean, there's a reason why the military uses cadence before you go out and kill somebody. There's a reason why rock and roll groups can bring the music up or bring your emotions up or any kind of group. Bring them up or dash them upon the stone. It's all very possible with music. It's all right there. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually like almost all types of music. I, I can put up with the kids coming in and list at work and listening to, to whatever at, at work and this and that. And, and, and even that horrible rap stuff. <laughs> it's not so bad. No, it's not. You know, some of it is actually artistic. There, there's some talent there. Yeah, but there's a whole ninety percent of it that just. Uh... <laughs> you know what? And, and it's horrible. But but even that, I've listened to for for two reasons. One is make sure no one's lying to me. Yes. And it really is dirty, filthy, evil, and bad. But the question is, why is there a segment of society that relates to that? Because that's what they see every day. And, you know, I, I agree that wholeheartedly, but well, you know why rap is a multi-billion dollar business? It's not the black kids in Oakland buying it. Oh, it's the white kids in suburbia that is buying it. And they don't see that every day. It's an interesting, and I don't know what the answer is, and I really don't know why, but I find it fascinating. The thing about why a segment of society is so turned off from the norms is something we should be concerned with. I mean, it is hard to teach love your neighbor and, uh, and brother when you're seeing songs about killing your neighbor and your brother and your mistress and wife and your cocaine and blah, 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 and everything else. It is quite interesting. Um, the, the arts people. Um, people. It's another interesting and true biographies of people. It's interesting to see what people have done through history and why they have done it. Um, and I'm not a strong reader. I, I bought a, a Kindle reader a couple years ago to try to read more books. And I got through six or seven. Uh, most of the books I've read in my life have been signed to me by a teacher, <laughs> one form or another. <laughs> um, but certain people, um, John Paul Jones, just f fascinates me. Guy's an English captain, too much discipline. He uh, beat one of his uh, sailors to death. Back in the days where you were allowed to beat him, he just couldn't beat him to death. So the English fired him. So he came to America and changed his name, name to John Paul Jones. He was the one who said, I, the British asked him if he was ready to surrender, and he said, I have yet begun to fight. He died of old age by being the rear admiral in Russia. <laughs> Some people are just called to be what they're going to be, and that part fascinates me. Uh, was anybody else I was supposed to name here? Um, you know, there's various other interesting people how they grow up. Okay, now that you think I'm totally crazy on expanding this, one more scripture. I don't have to one more scripture. Am I there yet? I mean, yeah, okay, why not? Proverbs 14.4. Talking about thinking outside the box. Proverbs 14.4 says, Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. For you non-agricultural people who grew up in the city, <laughs> if you have no horse, and the ox is really a cow, but if you have no horse in a stall, the stall is clean. But if you have a horse, you can do more work. The stall I had my lamb in was sure dirty, <laughs> and I made it that out. <laughs> What is God? How many omnis can you put in front of God? Omnipresent, omnipotent. Here's a guy who knows everything. He knows the secret to cold fusion and unlimited power, if such a thing exists. 
And what is he going to stop and tell us? No horse equals a clean stall. But with the horse comes much increase of work. This is the word of God. I ain't making this up. <laughs> Why? What does that What does that even mean? I mean, this is... It's Bible to say work smarter and not harder. This is, a, this is actually practically capitalism right here in this Ross form. You go out and hoe all day and, and grow corn and eat and be filled. Or you could buy yourself an ox and do twice as much. Or you can do two ox and do four times as much. You can be one of those capitalists. One of those, you know, Andrew Carnegie, 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 and do the still nonsense or Rockefeller and own all all the oil in the world. What commandment was given to Adam and Eve? Subdue. And the last half of that? Subdue the earth. And subdue the earth. I hate to say it, but uh, Trump is actually uh, doing God's work. He's kind of uncouth and rude to me for my liking. <laughs> but the idea of a capitalist, I think I found it right there in that, that ox story. Now, I don't think you should, you know, pollute the world and drink brown water and like you do in Flint, Michigan or, you know, brown air and all that nonsense. But think about it. What was Adam and Eve told to do? Were they told to go to church every Sunday? You eat the food. Practically, there was no church. They really couldn't help the neighbor. There was no neighbor to help. <laughs> How many people used to break into the Soviet Union, Russia, back in the 1940s, 30s, 50s, when Stalin was killing everybody? Why not? They wanted out. <laughs> they wanted out. <laughs> it's quite interesting. Quite interesting. So where there is no ox, the crib is clean. Maybe, just maybe, the Bible is an owner's manual. It tells what to do or how to do, but not exactly what to do. Well, that ain't right. This thing's on our manage for a saw. You ever took a, a saw, chainsaw, rotary saw, skill saw? <coughs> it's all kind of stretchy. You know, keep fingers out of the saw blades, plug it in, oil it every so many hours, whatever. But it doesn't tell you how to build the nightstand or how to build the bed or how to build the house. It's a tool for building these things. So we, we know how to be good people. We know how to be a good husband, a good father. A wife or mother on the other side, I'm not, not picky. We can be the great physician. We can heal families and heal the nations. We can forgive people, not of their sins, but of the, of the wrong they have done, done to us. It says that Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly, more of life. But I think sometimes, and it's a funny thing to say in church, we're too myopic and just focus on the Bible. You need to go outside with that ox. And there are certain callings for certain people. I don't know how many of these things we all, all are. And how many people are in great positions. Um, Paul always put us into great warriors with the armor of God to go conquer, to throw out the evil one. And I think we all have our own little slides. We're not all these things all, all the time. But I think we have the tools, we're given the tools, and we just have to think how to use them. Sometimes I think we, we worry too much of, oh, I must always listen to the Christian music. And that's one, probably one of my least favorite music. I definitely don't like 7-Eleven music. The same seven words 11 times over. That, that drives me nuts. <laughs> I like nice long songs, you know. Drum a shiver to the levee, good seven minute long song, that, that's perfect. <laughs> but you need to take these things and actually use them once in a while. Go out in the world. 
It is a calling of God to work and supply for your household. I'm not going to argue men, women, and all that nonsense. But somebody has to go out and work and pay for the household. <laughs> in different times, in different places in history, I, I think it can all work, work together one way or, or the other. But you have to get out and actually do something with what, what you know. And that is probably the difficult part. I mean, it's easy to love your neighbor if you don't know. I always thought that was a one of the sillier things God said. How can you love your neighbor who you have seen and say you love me who you haven't? Well, it's a lot easier to love somebody I haven't seen. <laughs> I love all the people I don't know. <laughs> and those who I know I have a hard time with, I gotta tell them. <laughs> okay, so much for that. <laughs> but I think you need to take what you have learned, take what you know, take what you have. If you're only given a cup of water, you're only required to use a cup of water. But you don't use it for yourself, you don't need to drink the water yourself. You give the water to your neighbor or to someone who's in need. So after all of this, all I'm trying to say is, it's a great big giant world out there and we should be a part of it. Not become it, but be a part of it. Do our, let our light shine in the world on top of the hill, not under a basket as the song goes. To spread your love, this forgiveness or to heal or to declare a war on whatever you're called to do or how to do it. Let us stand this morning before I babble on too long.